Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you knew of someone for a long time and you knew you were gonna meet them in person and you were just hoping and praying that they were as cool as they seemed? <laughs> well, I am so grateful that I just got to spend two days in a room full of amazing female entrepreneurs and Kate Northrup was one of them. And I will tell you, her energy, her light, her love is so, it's so apparent in everything that she does. And in this interview, I have to tell you, she blew my mind. I mean, things that I don't think about as an entrepreneur, as a mom, which she is as well, like she really got me thinking more internal. She talks about the four cycles that we go through, the four seasons in a 24 hour period, in a 30 day period, and in a year. And how that really helps us figure out how to do what we're doing next and why we feel the way that we do. And she actually correlates it to our menstrual cycle, which really blew my mind because that's something I never think of. So in this interview, if you're in a place right now where you feel resistance, you feel burnt out, Kate also shares that she recently went through a big burnout period and how she got to the other side of that. She's a best-selling author. She is the founder of The Origin Company and she is teaching something that all of us, all of us women, need to hear and understand so we can show up feeling great, doing less and receiving more. So get ready for a very inspired living interview with my new friend, Kate Northrup. Miss Kate Northrup, I'm so dang excited to have you on the show. So like here we are in our respective suites in Miami <laughs> after spending two days together um, at Allie Brown's The Trust. And it was just so amazing to meet you in person. It's, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to meet you in person. It was so funny last night, just sitting around with all these people. I was like, oh, all these people were strangers last, like two days ago. <laughs> right. And now I feel, yeah, it's amazing. Like the time collapse of being together in person is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And I have to tell you, I have missed it so much just to be able to be in a room of like-minded souls and um, that energy, which I know you talk so much about. So yeah, it felt so good. And we've had this podcast scheduled for a while and I'm like, it feels so much better now that I've been able to like see you in person. So it's for those perfect. of you who have not been getting out and I get it, it's been scary times, but I will tell you as someone, and I know Kate, you can probably attest to this as well. Like there's nothing more powerful than putting yourself in a room with like-minded thinkers, people who are doing bigger things that help you stretch right? It's, it's amazing. And actually I moved to Miami a year ago and from a small town in Maine and the difference of, I, you know, I love Maine, no shade. However, the difference <laughs> of being in such an expansive place where there are so many people thinking outside the box and going for it has just like, I didn't re really even need to change my behavior. I've just automatically yeah up leveled and it's been yeah. and expanded you know it's been so phenomenal from being in person with other people who are thinking bigger than i had given myself permission to do before so yeah i yeah. giving agree. ourselves if it's, if it's permission. possible do it yeah. <laughs> yeah and i would say energetically that probably was a really big shift for you going from portland maine to miami Right. So how was that transition for you? I know that it was, it was kind of a surprise. Um, you were dealing with some things in your life and you're like, here I am in Miami. What was the catalyst, Kate? Cause I think this is interesting for other people too, to be like, why did you make that leap? Yeah. So we had been in Tampa just to spend a month out of Maine for the month of January last year. So 2021. And uh, while we were there, my husband became incredibly ill. He is fine now, but he has this, um, has had an ongoing journey with something called red man syndrome, which is like a severe, it, I, I, it's like a bit mysterious, but it's, you know, it's not like a common diagnosis and yeah, there's no I had never heard treatment of for this. Yeah. Um, so it's basically like, I won't get too graphic because it's awful, but he was in excruciating pain. It's like his skin was raw and falling off for months. So imagine like your, your entire body being on fire 24 seven. Oh um, that sounds and, horrific. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he yeah. just was, you know, basically in bed. Um, and so there we were in a vacation rental and I was there with, you know, I have no family in that area. 
um, I was like, okay, now I'm the primary parent and the primary breadwinner. Yeah. And two little kids. I have like a yeah, very a sick lot. partner. Yeah. We have a three and six year old. And so, um, the people he was working with for his healing said, he would heal faster if he, if we stayed where it was humid and near the negative ions of the ocean. And I was like, cool, we can do that. You know, we have yeah. the ability to work from wherever. So, um, I just called up some girlfriends who lived in Miami and I was like, well, maybe like, maybe we'll come down there. And so we thought we'd come down for a couple of months and then that turned into five months. And then that turned into schools that I found that I love for my girls. And then that turned into, we sold our house and six months later, you know, we had completely changed our lives and hadn't yeah. gone back. We, we packed a bag for a month and, and, um, didn't go back for six months. So I wow. really each month, each week was like, even though in my personal life, it was so hard. And I, my heart goes out to anybody who has navigated a chronic illness themselves yes. or navigated yes. being in partnership with, partner. with someone yeah. who, or a child. I mean, it's just, I'm not, first of all, I'm not good at it. I'm just not good at being with illness in that way. Yeah. I'm just terrible. Yeah. And so it's not that I'm scared of it. I was raised by two doctors. So it's like the body doesn't freak me out. It's just like, it really comes up against all my stuff about like action and being capable and like sure. you know, so much of the work that I do. And so anyway, that part was really hard. However, each oncoming week was like, could we give ourselves permission to have this much more expansion? Like, what if we just changed everything? It's like, wait, mm -hmm. giving ourselves permission to just expand a little bit more and then a little bit more and a little bit more. And now a year later, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this is my life. I mean, I'm so yeah. freaking happy. I know oh, I'm, I'm like, I am, I almost annoy myself. I'm just like, in, yeah. And I want to go so back happy. to what you keep saying, which I think will be the theme of this interview today, which is giving yourself permission. We talked about it in that closed doors over the last couple of days. You're talking about it now. Like how often do we keep ourselves boxed in because we don't give ourselves permission to think time. of another, another way. Well, or if we think of another way, we think of all the reasons why not us. So I've really realized over the last, you know, three months or so, I mean, I am in such a time of tremendous transformation internally that is reflecting externally, obviously, because it does. Yeah, it does that. <laughs> I hadn't even realized the degree to which I was like, okay, there are special people who get to have what they want. And then there are not special people. And then, and they don't get to have what they want. And like, mm. I'm like on somewhere, I mean, this is so weird what our brain does, <laughs> but I was like, I'm somewhere on the spectrum in between. So I get to have some of what I want, but like, I really need to keep it under wraps because like not too much, right? Because yeah. I will take the, the classic zero sum game. If I really go for it, I'm going to piss off my friends from high school. Or if I really open up into abundance, that means somebody else has less. I mean, it's, and yeah. I didn't, I freaking teach this stuff. Yeah. I did not realize the degree to which I had a ceiling on what I was allowing myself to have. And so what was really key for me is realizing, again, like I kind of thought I knew this, but we revisit lessons over we and get over to again. Revisit. This is, yes. Exactly. Yeah. This is, I mean, I'm all about cycles. And so I'm like, okay, this, I'm just re I'm coming back around to the same lesson yeah. at a higher level of consciousness. That's right. And I was like, oh, wait. So if yeah. I'm, because at the end of the day, like we are absolutely all connected. We are not separate. The illusion of separation is what keeps us stuck because thinking oh. that, I have what I want that somehow means you don't have what you want is actually, it's just simply inaccurate because right. we know from being in that, you know, in the room with the women at the trust or me hanging out with other people, or even just listen, you know, hello, listening to your podcast or reading books. Yeah. When we witness other people have expansion, it does exactly the opposite of what our monkey mind or, you know, the reptilian brain says which is that like, we can't do that because it will take away from others. Actually, we have to do that because 
I realized like, oh, my backing away from all that's possible for me is actually preventing other women from having I'm doing the same thing. Yes. Oh my gosh. Stop it. Like right literally now. it's preventing them from doing that because yes. I am holding it back for like in, we all have our own little slices of the energetic yeah. universe. And so if I'm holding it back on my slice, there's literally less available for other people because I'm keeping it damned up. So it's been okay. Y'all might revolutionary have to go back and rewind, rewind that a couple times and go back and listen again, because by you not taking your slice, right. You're, you're not allowing other people to do that. And we, we don't think that way, Kate, especially as women, because we're like, Ooh, if I take too big of a piece, there's not going to be enough for everyone else. And like you said, I'm going to piss off my friends. I'm going to, you know, piss off a family member yeah. or yeah. It just doesn't so work that way. I mean, yes. Yeah. I also want to say this though. I had a girlfriend say something to me so powerful, Sarah Jang. She's a dear friend of mine. We were sit sitting at a pool here in Miami. She was visiting. And I was like, she, we were talking about abundance. And she was like, so what do you really want? She loves to ask that question. I'm like, oh, it's very, it's a good know, question. Like, so what do you really it's a great, want? It's, and she's it's an a expander. Good question. And I'm like, can't yeah. we just like talk about normal things now? <laughs> Play by the pool, please. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot. It's like all about like desire. And so I was talking about it and she was like, okay, so why not? And I was just like, ah, da, 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 people are going to have things to say about whatever. And she was like, Kate, people are going to say mean things about you and not like you if you play small. And people are going to say mean things about you and not like you if you play big. So you might as well just play bigger because people are not going to like you either way. It literally, either way. people not liking you has nothing to do with how big you're playing. It's just, yes. that's like okay. I love nature. her. Yes. Yeah. It was great permission for me. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes we just need that. We just need to hear that. You know, yeah. um, you talk about cycles and everything is cyclical. And I know that you went through like your own stuff last year, which we'll get to in a minute. Tell, tell people who may not know the origin company and like what you do, Kate. I mean, and again, we're going to talk about the shift and all that too, but like, let's talk about cycle, cycle in business, cycle yeah. in life, how you help people bring those two together. So they're not one versus the other, right? They're not in force. We can actually live a life that is abundant, that's in flow, that is in cycle with our bodies. And I find this very fascinating. So please speak to that. Yes. So the work that we do at The Origin Company is using biomimicry, which is the study of the natural world to inform and educate us to solve our human problems in more mm. sustainable and um, quite frankly, intuitive ways. So there's, you know, there's a whole school of biomimicry and architecture and design thinking, but I use it and we use it at the origin company in terms of how can we let our biology as humans, specifically women, and also the natural world inform how we solve our business problems. Okay, and keep talking. how we organize our time. So I went through a very rocky time becoming a mom. And that first year of motherhood just about did me in. And yeah. it, people don't talk I, about I that, talk. by the way. People don't talk oh, about that's that. a whole other they talk thing, about but... how amazing <laughs> it is, but it's not, it's actually hard, especially if you're it was a the worst ever. entrepreneur. Yeah. It was the worst ever. I wrote about it a lot in Do Less. So I won't tell like the whole, all the bells and yeah. whistles. Right go now. go but, read more. Yes. The very quick version is that I, I struggled profoundly. I had a very sick baby and then I had postpartum insomnia and postpartum anxiety that like sort of just like never went away. It wasn't a couple of weeks. It was like, and she was 13 months old and I was still hanging on by a thread. And so then my period came back and I was nursing still, but my period came back. And for the first time in my life, and I am getting to your question, this is the answer sure, to it. I got it. And for I the first it. time in my life. I was excited about my period coming, which was weird. I found <laughs> that weird. Sure. And I started tracking my cycle. And I started, I started a little journaling practice where every day I would write down the day of my cycle that I was on and the phase that the moon was in. And I would take a couple of notes about how I felt. What was my energy like? What was my mental energy like? Was I feeling creative? Was I feeling inspired? Was I feeling tired? Was I feeling inward? Was I feeling external? And I started to feel so good. And I started to feel so calm because what I realized is 
I, I've been like a productivity time management junkie my whole life. Like I've read every single book and bought every single planner. And I, what I had been searching for was some sort of structure to help me organize myself and, and feel held. And what I realized is we have these four very distinct phases of our cycle as, as people with periods, Mm -hmm. or if you don't have a period, you have that going on with the moon. And I'll get into the details of that. And I had been looking externally for somebody to tell me like a system or a structure that would Mm -hmm. help me feel calm and safe. And what I really needed was to tune into the system and structure that's been running the show in my body and is literally responsible for life on planet earth and gravity Right. to use that as an organizing principle. Like why wouldn't we use the time and energy management system of mother earth and our biology that's responsible for human life? And why would we use some system that some guy came up with that's like, just was his brain then, you know, that he was like not watching kids in the morning. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) was not, not. usually, usually. So there are these four phases and they govern really everything in nature. And there is so much like we, your body is a freaking miracle. Yeah. Scientists think they have it figured out. We do not. We know some tiny shred of what is actually going on. None of us know what we're doing here. None of us know. Like the chance of you existing, Carrie, is like one in a gajillion billion for any human even existing. It is statistically impossible that you would exist. And so why not use the wisdom of the miracle of life to organize ourselves. So there are these four phases and they are the same four phases of the menstrual cycle, the same four phases of the moon, they mimic the season. So they're very okay. easy to remember. Okay. And we go through them every single month. So women experience time um, very differently than men. And obviously gender is a spectrum, um, but different people will experience it on you know different extremes of the spectrum. So there's a 24 hour cycle. We're quite familiar with that, right? That's solar time. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how long, you know, it takes the earth to orbit it's or to, you know, spin around its axis. And so the day has these four phases. It has a time and, and testosterone dominant people have an experience of these four phases over the course of the day. So the morning is like the springtime midday is like the summer the afternoon is like the autumn and the evening and nighttime are like the winter energetically okay. and hormonally okay. their bodies actually mimic the energy of those seasons. Now, people with periods actually experience those same four phases over a 28 ish day cycle. So we have a phase of the month that is like springtime energy for us. We have a phase that's like summertime energy. We have a phase that is autumn energy and a phase that is winter energy. However, we live in a world that's organized for people who experience time in a 24 hour cycle. So right. if you're, you've been experiencing time in a 28 day cycle or 24 to 35 days is normal, right? Like that's a normal healthy cycle. And you've been trying to fit yourself into a 24 hour cycle and wondering why, what's wrong with you, right? Cause that's the mm-hmm. matriarchy. It's like, oh, if you don't fit into this model, there must be something wrong with you as opposed to looking outside and being like, maybe there's something wrong with the world. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe it's not me. Maybe maybe Um, that, yes. And so when you begin to realize like a full 50% or more of the population is not actually designed to feel the same and operate the same day after day, but we are living in a world that expects us to be that way. And then we also live in a world that's hyper-masculine identified. And so the masculine, the, the yang side of the yin yang, right? The masculine feminine right. is yeah. the spring and summertime energy. So it's like the visible results. We can see growth there's, you're doing things. It's activity oriented. It's positive. It's optimistic. It's sunshiny. It's like, go wonderful energy. I'm a very springtime energy person. I love that energy. Yes. (laughs) Me too. Me too. And so many of us are that way. Right. Right, We do. Yeah. However, however, there's a full other 50% of the cycle, which is the autumn energy and the winter energy. 
and what Which happens. Like nestled energy. It's like nestled. It's the, it's the energy of, so the autumn energy is the energy of completion and mm. turning within. And then winter yeah. energy is the energy of rest, reflection, research, pause, integration. And so we, as a culture, we miss literally half of what nature designed for us to experience because we have been taught directly and indirectly that rest is bad, that Mm -hmm. pausing is negative, that we're going to fall behind, that people are going to forget about us, that, that, you know, the best way to do things is quickly. And, and like in business, you know, we see this, right. This is like the way commerce works. We plan and then we launch and then we plan and then we launch and then we plan and then we launch. We don't wrap things up and then integrate. And so obviously what this causes is tremendous burnout and exhaustion and overwhelm. Kate, I can't even tell you like (laughs) what's going on in my brain right now. Like this is like, (laughs) it makes sense, Yeah, but I'm so disconnected to that philosophy or that idea of that our body goes through that. And I will tell you how many times I feel like I'm fighting against that winter energy or the autumn energy. And you're so right, because in business, especially we're like launch, you know, implement, launch, go, 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 Mm -hmm. go. And you're so right. And I know you experienced this yourself, that if you don't give yourself that time of rest and integration and wrapping things up, then you are just literally running on fumes. You are completely burned. Yes. And not only will your body suffer, obviously, your business actually suffers. So Mm. the thing is, we think like what's good for our business or what's good for, you know, our career or even our life is to be go, 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 go. Like that's the gold standard. But what actually is true is when we run that energy all the time, when we're running spring and summer all the time, actually what happens is our ideas become shallow. We, things get crispy. And we don't allow, right? You know, that crispy feeling. (laughs) We don't allow (laughs) for the depth and the richness of the ideas and the work that really wants to come through to come through because new growth requires a period of time where it looks like there's nothing happening. You know, the first trimester of a pregnancy is when you form every single organ of a human body, yet you don't even look pregnant. Right. Isn't that just so fascinating? I heard you talk about that in one of your videos, just, and we just referenced it briefly here. There's just like the human body. If you've had a child, like you really understand, like it is, it is such a phenomenon, like what, what we're able to do, how we're able to create. And I will say, Kate, this is really kind of like touching into to me here because I never think internal. I always think external. Now I'm spiritual. I breathe, I pray all those yeah. things, but never do I think about my menstrual cycle or the different types of energy. I'm just inspired living. Like, let's just do this. Like, let's just go. I'm a quick start, right? I'm a manifesting generator. Like I'm a go. Me too. Um, So this is really like enlightening for me. And how do you, I I have no clue. How do you match up those cycles? Is it like Mm -hmm. you look at it and you're like week one, week two, week three, week four, like it's a great question. So there, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to do this and, and, I will tell you the way that I do it and I teach it that really works for me because it is, this is the time to like put away your protractor. So it's not, it's not like (laughs) for all of y'all that have the protractor out, it's time. What happens is like, I get a lot of really detailed questions where I'm like, okay, you're too much in your head. So here's the thing, like this is energetic. (laughs) Right. So you, there's a, there's a time in the month where you feel the energy of springtime. It, if you have an unmedicated, relatively regular menstrual cycle, that is the week after your period ends. That's your follicular week. Then you'll have a week that is like that week that you're just like, I feel really hot. And like, I want to reach out to a lot of people. And that's your week of ovulation. That is, that is mimicking full moon energy and um, summertime energy. That's your time that you are the most verbally fluent and you will be literally the most magnetic. Your pheromones are at an all time high. It is the time when you're open to, um, to fertilization. Yeah, literally, but 
more importantly, metaphorically, because how often are you trying to get pregnant? (laughs) (laughs) And so, and then there's the, then there's the um, luteal time, which is the 10 to 12 days before you have your period. And that's the time when your brain hormonally is the most primed to be detail oriented and actually have the most energy to get things done. It's like the workhorse energy, but it's also the time when you're not feeling as social and you kind of want to just like close the office door and nobody talk to you. And then that menstrual time is the time when you're the most, your uh, left and right hemispheres are the most uh, interwoven for um, connection. And so you're actually the most intuitive during that time. You'll get the best ideas and you'll know how to make decisions the fastest when you tap into that. And so first of all, just tracking your cycle would be like number one. Yes. Um, Number one. So we have a do less planner that you can use for that. Of course, there's a million different tracking apps. We're working on one right now. Um, The planner looks amazing. Just go get the planner. Like so much easier. Yeah. The the planner is super beautiful. I'm also, I am, I'm like an analog woman running a digital business. So I just like love (laughs) a pen and paper moment. You know what? I do too. I I have to admit I do. Yeah. It's just, yes. And so, so what I do is I know which phase of my cycle I'm in. And I also know which phase the moon is in, because by the way, even if you're pregnant, nursing past menopause, um, or on the birth control pill, you can play too, because the moon has these same four phases every month and it's much more subtle, but it's really fun to play with. Like, Oh, okay. Am I in a, are we in a waxing energy collectively? Are we, are we in a like ramping up energy collectively? Or are we in a winding down energy or are we in a, you know, new growth energy, which is the new moon. So I just want to say like, everyone gets to play. This is not like, oh, I don't have a period. So this doesn't apply to me. This applies. Um, And (laughs) you too can play. You too can play the cyclical (laughs) energy. So I know which phase I'm in in any given week. And it, it colors the way I approach my week. So if I know that I'm in the couple of days leading up to my period, I won't book myself every single night of the week to be out because I know when I get to that point, I don't feel like doing that. But if I'm in that ovulation energy and super outward, I know that I can do back-to-back Zoom calls and I'll feel like a million bucks at the end of the day. And so it's really, this this process is about energy management as opposed to time management. Because when you manage your energy, you keep replenishing yourself and investing back in the source which is your body. And then you have so much more creativity, so much more access to your power and vitality, as opposed to what we've, what we're doing all the time, which is trying to push against the season we're in. But when you work Mm -hmm. with the season you're in, when you work with the phase you're in, you reduce friction so much and you get in a state of flow and momentum because you're working with what's actually going on as opposed to against it. Fascinating, Kate. I have to say, so fascinating. (laughs) I know, like mind blown, give me a second. And yet it makes so much sense. And what's coming to mind for me too is how many times you hear, I'm a morning person, I'm a night person. How does that play in? Because I think, you know, for some of us, like we know we feel better in the morning, but that's, again, is that Einstein time? Like, is that, is that, you know, time time or is it time? Well, that's your circadian rhythms. Right. Okay. So that's like there. So we do have, I said, we have those four seasons, four phases within a 24 hour cycle, as well as within a 28 oh, yes. day cycle, as right. well as within the year, as well as within a lifetime. So I have this graphic that's at the beginning of the do less planner. And I, I post it on Instagram every now and again, um, that's called, there's a cycle for everything. So it's really looking at the micros and the macros. So no, I'm also a morning person. So I know during the day, I want to, of course, schedule the 20% of activities that get me 80% of the results in the morning. Cause I know I feel like my most on at that time. Mm-hmm. If you're an evening person that, you know, those are just micro cycles within the grander, all, right. all the things. So we can schedule around those as well. Yes. And you said something that I want to make sure that you heard, and that was, of the things that get me the 80% of results. And if you look at your business, if you look at what really brings you in revenue, what brings you in joy, it really probably is 20% of the things that you do, right? (laughs) Yeah. I didn't want to just like flip over that because it's so true. It is so true. Yeah. Yeah. And the 80-20 rule is, is part of the bedrock of the do less methodology. 
we have clients who have implemented the 80 20 rule in the way that we teach and, you know, cut their work time in half and doubled their revenue. I mean, it's uh, one of the most common things I hear from us. I need to get my hands on this planner, Kate, and figure out this cycle thing because I will tell you. Yeah. I don't know if it's just that I'm getting older too, which is true. And having young children, as you do, um, I, I find the energy is, is really something I'm trying to manage right now. And I don't even think. I mean, I think about hormones, I think about those sort of things, but I don't think about any sort of cyclical, where am I in the season? Where am I in life? Like, it's just, I got stuff to do and I need to, I need to feel that springtime energy here. Yes, yeah. but what's so fascinating, and I was very similar, like I actually was born on the first day of spring. So I am literally like spring, 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 spring. However, the reason I teach this stuff is because it doesn't come easily to me. I don't like slowing down. I'm not a good rester. <laughs> and yeah, so just if, if anyone yeah. else is listening and you're like, I, and I also thought this was like super, like, you know, earth mama, like, Woo. like, <laughs> Woo comes like to I'm not going to do that. I run a business. Like, so yes. if anyone's thinking that just know it's okay. Like you can think that. And yeah. it's actually the most incredible way to access your creativity and productivity superpowers because when we work with the season we're in, as opposed to always trying to be in springtime, you get way better results in all the areas. Yeah. I mean, it makes complete sense. It makes complete sense. So let's talk about Kate. I know um, last year, you know, you had this huge change. You were dealing with your husband's illness. You've also made some business changes. For those that look at someone like you or someone like me or someone you know, that they admire and it looks so easy. It looks like, well, Kate talks about always being in flow and do less and, and she can't ever experience a bad day. You know, it's really important to me that people understand that no matter where you are in life, we're all humans. We all go through adversity. We all go through times of evolution, which is what I think adversity is. I think when you are greatly challenged, you are actually allowing your, your, the task is to grow right from that. And, and Kate, like you've become the next level version of yourself. Like you said, you're so expansive, like you're in this great place of transformation. So can we talk just briefly about that? Like, how did you deal with that really tough year? Knowing who you are, the brand, um, who you are, the mom. Um, like, I'm just so curious what, and did you, did you do anything or did you just feel the feels and work through it and be like, now I'm on mm. the other side of that. So uh, in February of last year, so really exactly a year ago, I realized I was like, oh, I am so burned out. And I feel a lot of shame about that, given the work that I do. But then I had to give myself some grace and be like, okay, you have two small children. You're the solo breadwinner and you have a sick spouse. Like, yeah. it's okay. And also, you know, hi, we're also like, I've been in a global pandemic. It's just a right. lot of things to navigate. Just a few things there. It's a lot yeah. to navigate. And I was like, it's so that was, that was first of all, to give myself permission to not be okay. It was huge. Mm -hmm. That saved me a lot of time and energy to just be like, yeah. I get to not have it all together. First of all, that's okay. So that was really big. And then the other thing I did is I had no evidence that it was a good time to rest given the status of my life. And yeah. we were at that time, um, we had two house, two, two homes. Like I was paying for this luxury rental in Miami. I'd never lived in a place that was that expensive before. And then I was paying for our house in Maine and like all that stuff. And yeah, that, uh, that's stressful. It was stressful. And I was paying for private school for the first time. And all signs were like, now is the time to really go for it. Except the main message that I listened to, which is that my body was just like, I can't, can't. I am so effing tired. And so yeah. with no evidence externally that it was a good time to rest, I just was like, I'm going to just rest and trust that if I am meant to carry on with my business, with my mission, if this is all, like that, I will be, it, it will work out. And so I started doing things like watching TV in the middle of the day. And I <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, you did what? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like in bed on Tuesday afternoons while my kids were in school watching shows. 
And I started doing things like that, that I had never, not even in college, not even, you know, not even when I was growing up, just like really resting. And I dialed yeah. way back on my schedule and, um, and we hit all our revenue goals without a problem. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, it's so funny as you're talking, literally, I can feel my whole body just being like, ah. Like, what would that be like? And why don't we give ourselves permission? I was watching, I was listening to Glennon Doyle talking about Abby and she oh like God. loves her whole thing like about Abby TV. being on the couch. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. She's like, I'm so mad at her. Like, why do you oh, get yeah. to rest? And I'm, I'm out here killing myself. And it's like, well, like, why can't you rest too? You know, it's just like, well, and we do, we was, get so busy. I, yeah. Me too. That was the whole issue yeah. with my husband being sick. I mean, I'm so, it was so insensitive of me, but I was like, you are just sitting around doing nothing all day and I'm out here killing myself. And then it was just like, yeah, what if I, actually how dare you be that sick? And my body was asking. For? Yeah. It was amazing. And so things yeah. just like kind of reorganized. And you hit all the revenue goals. Life, yeah. like, it, life carried on. Like, so life you might be on. in a place right now, like you just need to rest. You need to listen and tune in to what, whether there's external proof or not, like how you're feeling. And as successful women, as mothers, as doers, as pleasers, we rarely allow ourselves the time. And I feel like I'm talking to myself right now to rest, <laughs> to just be <laughs> like, yeah. granting thyself permission. Um, yeah. But I find that I find it really inspiring, Kate, that you're like, look, I'm just going to rest and I'm going to trust and I'm going to listen and I'm going to cut the strings of guilt that I'm feeling because that doesn't serve anybody. You know? Yeah. And I still like, I would lay on the couch and just like cry. I mean, it's yeah. not like it was like a joyful time. It sucked. Yeah. It was a and hard time. I, I know it was essential for what I'm experiencing now, which is a level of expansion and joy and like opportunities coming to me that I never even dared to dream. But I know it is because I honored. I don't know why, like I'm getting emotional about that. I just think it's, I think it's something that we all have to realize is like, and I feel like that was kind of like winter season for you, you know, like, um, yeah. And I don't know if I'm getting messed up with the seasons here. So you can feel free no, to correct you are. me. But I now, was wintering in Florida. But now you're like, <laughs> you're wintering in Florida. Exactly. I was. But look at this spring for you. I mean, look at what you are doing now and how you feel now. And I was watching a video, like, what would you have told yourself a year ago? right? That the hardest times we go through can be preparing us for like the things we can't even imagine yet. And that rings so true to my life, probably why I'm getting so emotional, because it is through the darkest times that I have been able to create light that I didn't even know was possible. Like I didn't even know inspired living was possible. I didn't know having a child at 45 was possible. I didn't, I, I didn't know, you know, so I think it's really powerful no matter where you're at in your life right now, no matter what cycle that you give yourself permission to go through whatever you're going through without judgment, without shame, without criticism, without all the stereotypes and all the, the labels we put on ourselves. Because Kate, it can be really hard to go through those times and feel like, like this is this sucks and this is it. Like, like I'm a good person. Why do I feel this way? Or why did this happen to me? Or, you know, I have a business I'm trying to grow. Like, why, why am I feeling this conflict right now? Or why am I in this situation with my sick husband and my two little kids? You know? Yeah. Yeah. But what that comes from is our profound disconnection with the truth of who we are, which is that we are animals. We are nature. We are made yeah. of the same stuff as the trees and the dirt. Yeah, And what is required in order for there to be any growth is seasons and cycles. I mean, I come from Maine, like there's a large part of the year where it's just cold and dark. Yeah. It's a whole lot we of winter. We have to remember we are not <laughs> separate from that. And so yeah. when we are in the cold and we are in the dark, what's really important is to know that like we're doing it right. Like we are nature. This makes perfect sense. As opposed to what's wrong with me? Why is this happening to me? It's like, no, of course you are a human being. You are an animal. You are part of the larger ecosystem. And then the larger, you know, cosmic universe, there are cycles and there are seasons governing everything. Why would our lives be any different? It's so true. That makes a lot of sense. Kate, you've rocked my world today. 
It has been the greatest pleasure being able to hug you in person and spend some time with you. I hope it is the first of many, many times we get to share together. For, for those people, for the person right now who's like, I need to figure out this. I need to figure out my cycles. I need to give myself permission. I love Kate. By the way, you love Kate. How do you not love Kate? Um, what is the next step for them? How do they get connected? How do they get the journal? Tell us right. how. Yes. <laughs> okay. So here's... <laughs> Here's what I would recommend. We have something um, that I created for folks who are just getting started called the Business Pressure Relief Kit. But really, you could you could sub out business with the Life Pressure Relief Kit. It, it, you don't have to have a business for it to apply to you. So if you go over to the origincompany.co forward slash relief, you can get access to that. It's six really simple, um, I don't even want to say steps, just like ways to get in <laughs> and one of them will resonate with you. So, and, and Amazing. I lay out the cycles and the seasons right in that. So if you were like, what was that about? Like, what's the energy? What am I doing again? That gets in there. So go do that. And, and we'll make follow. sure the link is in the notes. The link is in the okay, blog. So don't you. worry about it. We'll, we'll make sure it's, it's there front and center. Awesome. Thank you. And you can follow, um, at the origin on Instagram. You can come connect with me at Kate Northrup. I love to show up there, send me a DM, say hello. Um, and there we're always just, we're always engaging this conversation. I, I, it is my greatest passion to let people know the power that they have, that they are just sitting on that no one ever told yeah. me. And we are, I'm just, no I'm one just ever told. For thanks. No thanks for sharing with us, Kate. Thanks for sharing. Um, I feel more empowered already and I'm excited to dig deeper and I just appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your love for people and for what you do and really for the love you have for yourself and to give yourself, you know, that, that time, even though I know it was so hard for you, um, the immersion and what's, what's next for you is, is big. I feel it too. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you. You've just heard another uplifting episode of Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast. I hope you loved it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you'd like to know more about Inspired Living or to get your hands on many of our awesome free resources, such as the Be Studio Ready Guide, simply visit us at inspiredliving.tv forward slash podcast. Remember, your vision is your destiny, and we're here to help you bring it to life. Join me again next week for another extraordinary episode.